Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale vintage early production ArmorTech Tiger 1. Since the previous video, a lot of progress has been made to the model suspension and we'll be going over these additions and modifications in this video. Moving on to the tank's final drive, the final drive system that we have is located in this section over here. The final drives that you see over here are for the current release Armor Tech Tiger 1, which I also have going on alongside this build. What's interesting is that comparing the two generations together, this here being from the first generation, has some small differences compared to the newer generation. However, the design has pretty much stayed the same. If anyone has seen my other Armor Tech builds, you will see a similar setup here with the final drives. All Armor Tech kits consist of a aluminum bell housing, which is all CNC'd to the proper dimensions. The main drive gear, which is always one piece CNC'd steel, as well as some ball bearings and seals. Now, even though the two parts are basically the same between the two generations. The one difference that comes to play is that on the original first generation Armatech kits, the bell housing itself was actually made out of a cast aluminum component. The newer generation Armatech kits have this component here, all comprised out of CNC'd aluminum. The casted versions are technically more accurate to the real tank as these parts were casted on the real tank. However, the two components are exactly to spec and both assemble and install very easy and effortlessly. As for the main drive gear, they too are exactly in spec with each other. One key difference to tell the two generations apart is that on the back of the first generation Armor Tech tanks, there is a small divot found in the center, while on the newer generations, that divot is not present. However, as of note, there is a small little nub that is present on the gear facing due to the way the pieces are machined. Also, as a side note, as a quick tip, it's a good idea to buff this little nub away with a Dremel with a cutting stone in order for having the piece to be completely flush which will aid in the installation of the component once fully assembled. As for the bell housings themselves, as you can see these guys here are paint pre-painted and pre-primed. This is not typical for the kits. The reason why these pieces here are pre-painted was this was done by the previous builder. The final drive gears themselves like I mentioned are made out of a mild steel and can be susceptible to rust, which is why keeping them away from moisture is an uh, important thing to do, specifically if you have your kit in long-term storage. Normally the gears come in a wax paper like this, which does give some preservation to them. Having said that, for the pieces being as old as they are, they are in excellent condition with only a few small areas of surface rust which prior to assembly will be buffed down and removed. And here go the final drives going through their assembly process. This unit here is fully completed and is ready for installation while this unit here is currently awaiting to get its lubrication added to the final drive gear. Like in all of my ArmorTech build videos I like to heavily lubricate the final drive gear before adding it to the casing and then mounting it to the vehicle. It's very important to lubricate this component as this is probably one of the most important pieces of the transmission in that all of the drive is supported on the following teeth. Like I often mention in all of my Armatech build videos, it is crucial to add a liberal amount of lubrication and grease to this final drive gear itself. It both helps preserve the steel of the gear preventing it from any rust and oxidation as well as it also improves performance as well as longevity of the tank. As for the casing itself, as you can see here's the unit all pre-assembled with the bushings and the seal added. As for the type of grease itself, I'm utilizing 
the grease that you see here, which is the same type of grease which I've utilized on just about every one of my Armatech builds to date. Like the real Tiger One, the Armatech model features a real torsion bar suspension. Now, on the first generation of Armatech Tiger Ones, the system was in the following format that you see here. It consisted of several small CNC brass and aluminum blocks in which the steel rods would then be mounted to. The blocks themselves would be bolted to the tank and serve both as a junction point for the actual swing arm suspension as well as it would also add as rigidity braces for the tank's lower hull. Starting for what these pieces are, the brass blocks with the large diameter hole in it, these parts here would be for the actual swing arms themselves. The swing arm would slip into this portion here and would hold it in place. As for these blocks, the blocks that you see here are for the corresponding torsion bars themselves. The bars would be bolted to these components here, thus holding them into place and giving the tank its sprung suspension. As for the type of blocks, if we notice, they're divided into two categories. Armortech even went ahead and marked them with little cuts on the block in order to prevent them from getting confused. They look exactly the same. However, if you look at the actual diameter of the holes for where the bars are, you notice that one set is wider than the other set. This is because the tank features two size of rods for use of the torsion bars. For the first four and last four wheels of the tank, where the majority of the weight needs to be distributed, Armortech utilizes a thicker steel rod. For the thinner portions of the, or the center portions of the tank's wheels, Armortech utilizes a thinner steel rod. This system here is basically still done today. However, it's a lot more evolved from this more primitive setup. In comparison, the way Armortech does their systems in more recent history is that in lieu of all these tiny little blocks in which the builder can in many cases get confused on the orientation of the layout, Armortech simplified the unit by having just one solid aluminum block with the holes pre-CNC'd in. On this location here is where the torsion bars would enter, and here is for the swing arms. Keep in mind the way the torsion bars work on these German tanks is that they do crisscross each other on the bottom portion of the hull. Also, if we can notice, the of all the rod holding blocks are made out of CNC aluminum, with the exception of one. The one block that you see here is made out of CNC brass and has a special cut in it. The purpose of this block here is that this block here is for the very first swing arm that is located in the very front portion here of the Tiger One. Like I mentioned in the previous videos, the tank that you see here was left in basically a virgin state after the customer partially started it. While on the subject matter of the suspension, it is also very important to note that one stereotypical trait that these early first generation armor tech tanks had was that the tolerances for the components were very, very tight. So tight actually that the parts had trouble actually fitting inside of their locations. This is true for the swing arm as well as the torsion bar itself. Because of this very stiff style reputation, these early, very early first run armor tech tanks are considered to be a lot more difficult to assemble compared to the newer units. For before I could go any further, all of the holes that you see here are going to have to be bored out and enlarged in order for the parts to fit a lot more smoothly and effortlessly. Keep in mind, this is very important at this stage because the swing arm needs to have some free movement in order to articulate properly. If the piece is so tight inside its bushing block that it'll prevent it from functioning properly, your suspension will not be assembled correctly and the tank will have trouble performing. 
I must stress, however, that this tight tolerance feature or issue is only present on their first two batch of Tiger 1s that came out approximately 15 and 10 years ago. Since the release of these kits, their tolerances have been greatly improved to the point now where not if any hand fitting is required in order to have the pieces get installed and function properly. However, this is important to keep in mind for anyone who may find themselves purchasing a first run or early production Tiger 1 kit from Armortech or either from a virgin kit like this one here or if they are purchasing a partially or fully built model from a customer on the second hand market the suspension is definitely one keynote to keep in to look out for as a potential customer like what was mentioned in a previous scene the shaft for the swing arm and the corresponding brass bushing block the tolerances are very very tight so much so that it will either not fit on like the way you see it here, or if it does fit on, it's going to be a very snug fit, which will be too snug for the suspension to work properly. In order to remedy this, you will need to slightly expand the hole on the bushing, and which will loosen up the tolerances. Now, you can try to drill it out with a drill bit however from my, from what i have seen the hole that is found on that is used for the bushing block as well as the diameter for the shaft on the swing arm is not that of a standard drill bit so if you try to drill this out with a drill bit the hole will be too large and the swing arm once installed will have a tendency to have some play. If this component has any sort of wiggle or play in it, it will be very detrimental to the tank's performance and basically your suspension will be terminal. So it is very not recommended to use. In order to open up the tolerances, I found it best to utilize a drum with a small diameter sanding drum. This version of the drum is a lot smaller than your standard units. The standard unit version is going to be too large and will not fit the diameter of the bushing. This version here is the mid-size size, and as you can see, fits in absolutely perfectly. For the actual drum itself, I use what looks like the coarse drum. I would avoid using the fine grit version as that version there will be quickly worn out and the you'll be swapping out drums in order just to finish several of these bushings. The medium grit can possibly be used, but as you can see for this version here, I'm using the coarse version. To open up the tolerances, I'm simply going to use my hands to hold the component as well as the tool. I'm going to go in and carefully remove just enough material in order for the piece to fit on, nice so it could rotate nice and freely, but not too much where I'll have any wiggle. After, it is a good idea to have your sample swing arm in hand in order for you to test fit the component to see if it's to your liking. However, after one or two of these blocks, you'll get, begin to get the muscle memory that you can do this on the fly. Fortunately, the amount of material that needs to be removed is not a whole lot, so this procedure goes by fairly quickly. However, it is one you do want to take your time with and you don't want to rush. I'll be doing this block that you see here in real time in order for you to get an idea on the actual procedure. Now also keep in mind this procedure here is only needed to be done with this first generation of Armor Tech Tiger 1s. The subsequent versions that came out after this release, this procedure is 100% not necessary as the tolerances are nearly perfect. With that said, let's go ahead and start the procedure. When drilling, you want to make sure that the tool is completely even and you're evenly removing the amount of material required. It is a good idea to go ahead and do both sides one at a time. I'm not putting a whole lot of force on the Dremel and on the bushing. I'm literally just letting the tool and the bit do its job.
As you can see, all of the interior surfaces have been ground. And when I come to test it with the swing arm, the piece will now fit on perfect. As you can see, it can ha it has absolutely no hang-ups whatsoever in the swing arm rotating, and there is no play from side to side. This is the type of performance that you're going to be looking for when doing this procedure. Also, as a quick tip, if you notice I'm doing this over a garbage can, this is because the procedure generates a lot of small fragmentation, which doing it over the garbage can helps with the cleanup a little bit. Just like with the swing arm, as well as what was also mentioned in the previous scene, the hole for mounting on the torsion bars is also slightly undersized and will be very difficult in order to install the component when it comes time to mounting to the tank. In order to remedy the situation, the hole needs to be enlarged so that the pieces are a more loose fit. To do this, you will absolutely have to have a drill press for this procedure. Unlike the last procedure in which was done with a Dremel and was done with freehand, for this procedure here, a drill press is absolutely required as the drill press will ensure that the hole is true and does not have any pitch or yaw to it. This procedure needs to be done to both styles of torsion bar mounts for both the thinner one as well as the thicker one. For the thinner one, the drill bit that I used was that of a 1164 drill bit. As you can see, the piece fits on without any hang-ups. And as for the larger style version, a drill bit of 730 seconds was utilized. And as you can see, just like with the thinner one, the bar now has no problem in sliding into its proper location. Now, for the thinner, for the thinner block, because the diameter of the drill bit is less than the diameter of the mounting, the threaded mounting side, you can simply just go right through the component and not have to worry about destroying any of the threads. For the wider block, this will be an issue and you cannot simply just drill all the way through. In for the wider version, with the drill bit, I go ahead and set the depth of the drill press so that it is slightly below the mounting portions that are right here. Once the piece is installed, two fasteners will lock onto the torsion bar in this manner. By setting the depth on the drill press ensures that all of the blocks have a uniform depth with the depth of the hole. With the blocks out of the way, it is now time to focus on the swing arms. Like I mentioned in an earlier scene, the swing arms on this model here were pre-assembled by the owner of the tank. Just like with all Armor Tech tanks, the swing arms consist of three components. You have the axle, which connects to the torsion bar. You have the main swing arm body. And you have the actual axle for the road wheel. This design has pretty much stayed exactly the same on all Armor Tech releases from this time period. The construction of the parts are as follows. These two axles here are made out of steel, while the swing arm body itself is made out of billet CNC aluminum. It is important to note that this here is the revised swing arm. On the original first batch of Armor Tech Tiger 1s, the swing arm design was actually that of an all cast one piece unit. This design here was very true to the real Tiger. However, it was discovered shortly after the first batch of tanks were built that the swing arms themselves were a weak point and were prone to crackage. That system was then redesigned by Armor Tech to the layout that you see here. The only batch of Armor Tech Tigers to receive these components are literally the first batch of Tiger 1s. That batch being a mid-production style of Tiger 1. It's important to note because if anyone is in the opportunity or a position to purchase a second-hand first batch Armor Tech Tiger 1, either pre-built or still in virgin kit form, it is important to note if those suspension pieces are the first 
all cast units. If they are, Armor Tech does supply the replacement revised design like you see here. You just contact them through their email address and they'll be able to arrange for the replacement parts to be sent. As for this unit here, all of the parts were pre-assembled by the owner and the parts are actually threaded on as per the Armor Tech kit. The owner went ahead and added some kind of an epoxy or some kind of a thread lock in order to keep the pieces on nice and secure. However, even though they are on secure, I will go ahead and add my pin modification, which is something that I do to all Armor Tech tanks with the torsion bar system like we have here. The pinning will eliminate any error or any type of chance that these components can unthread from the swing arm body, which will cause nothing but serious issues to the vehicle once fully assembled. Also, if we can notice, since the components were assembled many years ago and have been left out in the open air, the bare steel components here have some oxidation and surface rust on them. This, the surface rust is only, again, on the very surface and is not very deep and will sand away very easily with some emery cloth. Once the components are thoroughly sanded, the component will then be able to be assembled with its torsion bar rod itself. Just like with all Armor Tech tanks with this torsion bar design, there are two sets of torsion bars. The one swing arm here is designed for the outer road wheel, while this design here is for the inner road wheel. There are key differences and are illustrated in the instruction manual. It is important to know which component is for which type wheel, which will help with the orientation when it comes to the installation of these components. And here goes the swing arm now ready for the installation of its torsion bar. Prior to the installation of the torsion bar, what was done to the swing arm was that the two steel axles have been pinned and drilled in place. Like I frequently mention on these Armor Tech builds, it is a really good idea to pin the axles to the swing arm in order to prevent any chance of the piece on threading on you while the tank is in operation. As for how exactly to do that procedure, uh, on my video listings I actually have a tutorial in which I perform this procedure to a swing arm just like the one you see here. After the drilling and pinning was concluded, I went ahead and then turned my attention to getting rid of all the surface rust off of the steel axles. If we can recall, there was some surface rust on these locations here as they were left to the external air for a number of years. With some emery cloth and some sandpaper, the rust was quickly and efficiently removed, leaving for the surface that you see here. Just before to further go ahead and remove any other dirt and debris that was on the component, all of the parts, the swing arm components, were washed thoroughly in a bath of turpentine in order to remove any extra debris and any dust which was left on the parts from the sanding. One procedure that is heavily recommended to do to the torsion bar before mounting it on is to grind away a small flat on the surface of the rod. The purpose of the flat is that Due to the round nature of the bar, the two mounting fasteners will have a habit on slipping on the bar as they are gripping onto a small location. If the parts are tightened on and they still slip, that will lead to nothing but issues and the suspension will fail to hold up the weight of the tank. By grinding on a small flat, you widen the surface area and give more more area for the fasteners to grab onto, latching it on, and preventing it from slipping. This flat modification needs to be done to either side of the torsion bar. However, it is important to do one side before the other. First you add the, the flat to the side that gets mounted to the torsion bar, and then you go ahead and mount it on. After that is out of the way, it is then a time to find the proper location of the torsion bar being mounted to the tank to add the next flat. By doing this, this will ensure that all of the torsion bars are at the proper height required for the tank suspension, as opposed to having them at different heights, which can also lead to issues. There is one modification that I made to all of the components here in order to better aid with the build. 
And that has to do with the, fast, the type of fasteners which are used to secure the torsion bar to the swing arm. The kit does supply you and is recommended to use two M4 Allen bolts in order to secure the components. However, due to the way the pieces get installed onto the tank, the Allen bolts, if added, you will have to install everything once the components are inside of the vehicle, which is a tedious process and can cause difficulty specifically with the alignment of the torsion bar with the rest of the suspension. It's also important to note that with the with the Allen bolts that stick up, you they may, depending on the way they are bolted onto the swing arm, the orientation can be altered in in the which like this one here where the fasteners will be pointing downward. And if the suspension articulates, the the fasteners will make contact with the bottom of the hull, thus preventing the component to articulate properly. A common modification that customers have made to these kits over the years is that replacing the Allen screws with that of set screws or grub fasteners, like the ones you see here. The grub fasteners, as you can see, are a flush fit, which allow the piece to be bolted on nice and securely. However, allow the component to be pre-assembled and then installed into the tank in this format. Also, with the flush fitting, there is no way that the pieces can make contact with any sort of other parts on the tank, namely the hull or any other equipment that may be mounted above it. Another plus for the procedure is that it is a very simple mod to make in that there's no modifications needed to be made to the suspension itself. You just simply swap out the kit supplied Allen bolts with M4 by 6 or by 4 set screws. It's also important to note that this fastener modification is only needed to be made to the Armor Tech kits from the first mid-production kit release, as well as this early production Tiger One kit release from the 2003-2004 time frame. All subsequent, subsequent kits that were released after this batch here were redesigned by Armortech and the grub set screws are now included with all of those kits and have been for some time. And here goes a one of the suspension bars with the flat added. As you can see the flat does not have to be very broad and very deep. In fact you don't want to go below the halfway point in producing the flat as progressing past the halfway point can weaken the steel or of the torsion bar itself. With the flat added, the piece can simply now be inserted into its proper location and the set screws added. It is also important to note that strong Loctite is to be utilized on the fasteners here in order to keep everything in their proper location. Now if you are installing the components, sometimes the set screw might stick up slightly above the axle depending on how deep you ground the flat onto the torsion bar. If that's the case it's not an issue. With a Dremel with a cutting stone or with a sanding drum you can go ahead and buff away any of the set screw that emerges from the top portion of the axle in order to smooth it away. The purpose of this buffing procedure is that when it comes time to insert it into the tank's bushings, you don't want these parts making any contact with the bushing as it will inhibit the component in its installation. With the pieces nice and buffed away like this, the installation will be much more smooth. After the enlargement procedure is complete, it is then time for installation of the parts to the tank. Now the parts are installed via fasteners, in this case Allen screws. All the screws are kit supplied and are the appropriate heights and do not interfere with any of the components once installed. When it comes to the bushings, there are two fasteners which hold it to the hull, while with the torsion bar brace, there's actually three. Two on the bottom and one in the side. The brace serves twofold. One, it's what actually mounts the torsion bar to the tank, and the second thing is that it helps mount the bottom plate to the side of the hull. Before the plates, 
for the installation of these pl of these blocks, the plates, as you can see here, have plate in them. Once the parts are bolted on, you can have two fasteners on the side and one large fastener on top, and it literally sandwiches everything together and keeps the hull nice, sturdy, and in one piece. Because of all of the fasteners which are utilized for this application, as well as the sheer importance of these fasteners, it is strongly recommended to use high strength Loctite on all of the bolts in order to keep them in place and to keep them problem free. As for the actual installation process itself, the method I like to use is to first install the brass bushings to all of the locations on the one side. Once the bushings are installed, it is then time to install the torsion bar mounts. One important step to keep in mind is that of the orientation of the holes. These pieces here are not symmetrical and are not reversible. They only go on in a certain manner and when everything is properly placed, the holes should line up. The pieces are pre-threaded. I do have some Loctite here on this fastener and this guy here will be installed. For the installation, I first thread on the parts by hand. After the parts are thread on by hand, I will then go ahead with the wrench and tighten them up further. A smear of Loctite is used again to keep everything in their place. Now, before I go ahead with the wrench, to make sure that everything is lined up in its place, I take a assembled swing arm, line it up into the hole. If we can see the hole, the swing arm is properly aligned with the lower hull. It doesn't emerge from it slightly. It's nice, firmly in place. So then from here, I could then with the Allen wrench, go ahead and tighten up the fasteners. Once these fasteners are tightened up, I can then move on to the next bushing and so on and so on until the installation is complete. Also, if we can keep, as we can see, that by using the swing arm as a jig, the swing arm can spin absolutely freely, which again will, is gonna come to play later on when these pieces are permanently installed with the torsion bar suspension. After all the bushings are installed, it is then time to move on to the torsion bar blocks. Now, like I mentioned before, this is where things can get a little confusing to the first time builder. These early first run Armatech have three styles of torsion bar blocks. The first one here is made out of brass, as you can see, has a bevel cut into it. This version here is designed for the left hand side front torsion bar. The purpose of the bevel is that to compensate for that of the severe front angle of the bottom plate. There's only one of these in this kit. The others are all made out of aluminum and have the single notch cut into it. These ones here are also the wide version of the torsion bar. There again, there's one for the first two and the last two torsion bars on this vehicle. For the ones in the center, those are for the double notch cutout versions. Just like with the, the bushings, the pieces do have a set format on for the way the holes are aligned. Now, depending on how true your body panels are will depend on how easy of an installation these will be. I have seen some go on with absolutely no problem. However, I have seen some that the holes, namely the ones over here for the side of the hull, need to be adjusted slightly for the fastener to fit in nice and straight. What to watch out for is if the fastener has a lot of tension while the piece is being installed. If that's the case, stop what you're doing, back out the fastener, remove the other two, and with a quarter inch drill bit, go ahead and adjust the hole inside this little well here until the desired material is removed so the piece can go on effortlessly. Just like I did with the bushing, this guy here is going to be installed in real time just to show any viewers the procedure. Now, like I mentioned before, there are small little notches that are cut into the block for identification. The notches are also used for the orientation of which way the blocks get installed to the vehicle. For, the, for a proper installation, the ridges should be going away from the hull 
which will then allow the large threaded hole to be pointing up for the mounting fastener in its correct location. Now, since this block here is also used for mounting of the torsion bars, there are going to be two sets of holes that are pre-drilled and pre-tapped. The To ID the two, the two holes that are close together, this side here is going to be facing up as this is the actual mounting location for the torsion bar locks. The two widely spaced holes on the bottom are going to be for the bottom and are going to be used for the actual fasteners themselves. For the installation, I already have some Loctite pre-applied to this fastener here and I'm going to thread it in. I'm going to add a little bit more Loctite to this guy and then install him as well. As you can see, all the holes are properly lined up and the installation is going pretty smooth so far. For the large fastener, again, Loctite is added and is then hand applied. Now, as a quick guide to make sure that all the holes are lining up and that the bushings are properly lined up with their holes, again, with using of a swing arm, I could line it up as well as use a second one to ensure that once all the fasteners are tightened, the swing arms will still be able to move freely. Is at this time now I can start tightening the fasteners. The swing arms are still freely moving, which means the part is in spec and it can be tightened further. Put the piece is fully tightened, if anyone wants to double check again. The now I can then move on along to the rest of the installation, using the same procedure that I just did here. And here's the lower hull with both the bushings as well as the torsion bar brackets installed. As a quick side note, a dead giveaway on that this is a very early release Armor Tech Tiger is the fact of the bolt pattern that we see here on the bottom plate. These early pattern tanks are distinctive with this style layout as this layout was changed once the single bar torsion bar bushing and mounting blocks were developed. And here we have a close-up of the front torsion bar block and swing arm bushing. Like I mentioned before, this is the only torsion bar block here that is fabricated out of brass, as well as has a bevel that is CNC cut into it. If the builder is not careful, he can try attempt to mount on the incorrect block, which will not properly fit and lead to some issues. Once all of the torsion bars are assembled, it is then time to go into its primer, to which then it will be installed to the tank. Prior to going into primer, if you notice, I went ahead and masked up the areas of the axles in which the road wheel and in which the swing arm actually pivot inside of the bushing. These are two locations where you don't want paint, so to prevent any paint from getting on these locations, mass tape was used to protect them. The tape that's on the axle will remain until the installation of the road wheels, which protects the piece from oxidation, as well as any type of mishaps which can happen during the course of the installation. For the actual bushing axle, however, it is time to remove the tape and get the piece installed. With the tape now removed, as you can see, there's a bare metal area in which, again, this is where it will rotate inside of the bushing. Prior to installation, I'm gonna go ahead and add some grease to this location here. The grease will protect the bare metal, preventing it from oxidizing and rusting. It will also make the component lubricated, which will allow it to swing a lot more efficiently when mounted to the tank. A nice even amount is applied. 
to all of the surface areas of the bare metal. If you notice, I did not put any on the painted section here as it is not needed. With the piece now lubricated, it then gets inserted into its location. As you can see, the torsion bar was a very nice, simple install. There, this was due to the other mods that were mentioned previous in this video, namely the widening of the holes, as well as the alignment of all the blocks during the, their installation. Now, with as, as you can see, all of the torsion bars of one whole side of the tank have been fitted to the vehicle. What is next is to go ahead and add the fasteners to these locations here, which will keep them in their place, thus completing one whole side of the tank suspension. Once all the fasteners are tightened, the suspension is completed. As you can see from this scene, all of the fasteners from on this side of the vehicle have been mounted on, and the swing arms for this half of the vehicle are done. I will now flip the tank over and perform the exact same installation to the opposite side with the same exact method that I used here. And here's the suspension, now completed and added to the model. All of the swing arms have been added. They are fully functional. And will support the weight of the model during operation. As for the interior, you can see the completed layout with the bars running from either side of the lower hull and connecting to the appropriate bushing and lock block. In order to get the correct height on all of my ArmorTech builds, I went ahead and have a special jig that I fabricated. The jig holds the suspension to the correct location and allows me to mark the correct location on the torsion bar to grind away. This is definitely an important little procedure and one that I definitely recommend for armor tech customers or anyone who's tackling one of these kits also just like with the real german tanks the armor tech kit has its correct orientation of the suspension in that the one on the right hand side go towards the rear of the vehicle while the swing arms on the opposite side swivel to the front of the vehicle a lot of people ask why is this a feature on these German tanks, and it is because of the, or the way these torsion bars are laid out on the interior of the hull. With now the swing arm and torsion bar suspension out of the way, I the next procedure will be that of mounting on the tank's road wheels, as well as the sprockets and the rest of the running gear. More information on that procedure will be in an upcoming video. And with that, that concludes this model project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled vintage armor tech early production tiger one if you like this video stop by and like us on facebook and don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1-6 scale builds as well as 1-6 and 1-16 scale builds and detail components thank you